Hello all. Today I'm here for you with Anduin OS. This has been a uh, Linux distro that's been kind of making the rounds on YouTube lately, and I thought I'd give it a shake. Now, the reason that this distro has become so popular and has been kind of making a uh, such a splash is because it's made to be as close to Windows 11 as a Linux distro could possibly be, at least in terms of appearance. It's not really that in terms of a uh, usage because it is a Linux distro, and we're going to get right into that. So, for starters, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and we're going to install it. Now, I am running this on a virtual machine. It might go a little bit differently for you on actual hardware. Oh, and of course, the other thing we've got here today is tea. A nice cup of tea. It's taking a little while to kick up here. Again, it's running in a virtual machine. You can't expect it to be real, qu real quick, you know, in a VM. So, we're going to go ahead and we're going to hit English. English US. Unless you want that for any French thing happening on your keyboards, which is always annoying. Now, I'm going to untick this so I can get it installed nice, so I can get it installed quicker. But even though this is a pretty bog standard Ubuntu installation, I still appreciate the fact that it allows you to install the third party software for a uh, codecs, graphics drivers, and Wi Fi drivers and stuff like that while you're installing it. That can make a uh, big difference to people who have proprietary stuff like an old laptop that I used to run with Broadcom Wireless. Real pain in the butt. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to hit continue. And as you can tell so far, this is a bog standard Ubuntu install. Really not a whole lot a, a different going on here. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to hit install now. We're going to just erase the entire disk and go and install into an OS because this is a VM and that's also just the easiest way to install things in real hardware. You know, the best, your best bet is always just back up what you need and then install from a clean, basically from like a clean hard drive. And the reason you want to do that is because you can never really like rely on these kinds of installs protecting your data. You always want to have your data backed up to a external source. So we're going to hit continue. Now I know I skipped over the locale screen and the, uh, password screen there but again this is all it this is all very very bog standard ubuntu install you can see they didn't even change the theming all that much they did do a custom slide card which is nice which you can see right here on the screen in front of us a um now i would be very curious about how much this is actually based on debian versus being based on debian because it's ubuntu based and technically everything that's ubuntu based is debian based because ubuntu is debian based a, um, to me so far, though, this seems to be a distro that's actually closer to Ubuntu than even a lot of a, a Ubuntu derivatives are, like Mint, for example. You can see here where it gives us a nice a, uh, sample of what the uh, of what the start screen is going to look like. Very Windows 11-like. This is a distro that is, as far as I know, made by a, uh, a Microsoft engineer, although as far as I know, it's not an engineer that works on a uh, Windows directly because Microsoft is a big company. They've got a lot of things going on. And in fact, I would say the vast majority of people that work for Microsoft are not really near Windows. They're probably more into the cloud side of things and stuff like that, which is where Microsoft's been doing really well for the last couple of years. Windows, if we're being honest, is kind of a kind of a declining empire. That doesn't necessarily seem that mean that Microsoft's going to die with it though. Now this screen here shows us that Docker, that it basically comes with Docker out of the box. But one of the things that makes me wonder is, is a um, is this OS kind of targeted towards developers who already kind of have their Windows 11 workflow kind of down? My initial impression would be is that this is more like the new, you know, this is more like a uh, the distro that you install on grandma's laptop without her knowing. Don't don't ever actually do that, by the way. A, uh, but now what I wonder if it's kind of that, but also kind of a uh, made for developers who already have their whole thing down with Windows and they want to switch to Linux, but not really learn a whole new workflow. I'm not really sure how good of an idea that is. If you're a developer, okay, like, yeah, if you're putting Linux on grandma's laptop because you're tired of her getting viruses and calling you, yeah, she doesn't really need to learn a whole new workflow. I would think that if you're a developer coming to Linux or someone who's like more on the power user side of things, then it might be better for you to actually learn how things are done the Linux way as opposed to the Windows way. That is going to be a topic for a whole, whole other video because that can mean a lot of different things. And 
I will say that, like, in terms of workflow, sometimes a, uh, sometimes the open source world does absolutely leave a, uh, a lot to be desired. I freely admit that. Even though I will commit to using open source software for ideological reasons, where possible. I'm not a crazy zealot, but open source software is not always strongest in terms of workflow. Lots of cases where it's catching up, though. This install is actually moving pretty quickly, which is nice. The uh, the Ubiquity installer is a good installer. Been around for years, easy to use, installs quickly. What more do you really want out of an installer, right? And there we are. The install's done. We're now ready to restart. And we're looking at it around 10 minutes for the install, so nice and quick. That's 10 minutes in the VM. It'll probably go even quicker on real hardware. So we're going to go ahead and restart. And I'll see you back in a minute once I got her all restarted. And coming back up for us now you can see it even gives us the default purple boot screen of ubuntu which i'm not gonna i'm gonna be honest with you i absolutely love that color of purple and it was a uh 2504 so what's the yeah that's the most recent release sorry for me having a bit of an alzheimer's moment where i forgot a uh what year it is and here we are we are now in and doing os let me see if we can get it into full screen here there, we're in full screen mode now, and although you can't see everything here, the default resolution comes out with a tiny, tiny 1280 by 800. So, see here, it's a. If you can't see here, it's a very bog standard GNOME. No menu. And it's running a little laggy for me at the moment. Probably because it's in a VM, even though. And it's totally locked up on me here, so. We'll be back in one second here. There we go, and we're back. A, um, I do apologize, had some a, uh, issues there, and I believe it was caused by enabling a 3D acceleration in VirtualBox, caused the uh, VM to freeze up. So that might be something to keep an eye on for other people, especially if you're running this in a virtual machine, but I'm happy to report that by turning off 3D acceleration. It looks like everything is working now. So you can see here that this is your display menu, as I was at before, and it's a pretty basic GNOME display me GNOME 3 display menu. They didn't really do a lot with this. It's even still in the black. It being in the black is kind of an intentional a uh, decision by the Anduin OS developers. And let me show you how. We go down here to our system tray. Okay, we see here we have dark style. If I click that, it changes to white style. Now this style, a lot more like a uh windows 11. i'm gonna go ahead and i'm gonna open firefox see, see if it goes with see if it matches the theme so firefox goes with the white theme that's nice we're gonna go ahead and close that again and if i click the system tray again i can go back to a, a dark style which is a black background for all of the applications and firefox changes without even a restarting it wasn't expecting that that's pretty personally i much prefer the dark I think with the dark theme, this looks even better than a uh, Windows 11. I think most Linux distros look better than Windows 11. Now I'm going to go ahead and show you guys the start menu. This is, they've made the start menu a lot like Windows 11, 11 which is actually pretty cool. Even with the whole a uh, thing with the start menu being in the center of the screen. Okay, so let's go. I'm going to show you guys something else. Here. We go through the rest of the settings menu. We can see that you have all your standard GNOME settings. You can set hot corners and stuff like that, which I'm not going to do right now. Now, the other thing I know that you guys are going to want to see is the software center. You know, with Ubuntu, a lot of these Ubuntu-based distros, that's what sets them apart, right? Is how good is the software So, let's take a look at Anduin OS. By the way, I'm totally here for the Tolkien themes. Absolutely. Anduin OS, that naming is not lost on me in the slide. And here we are. We are in the software center. So let's just go through and install something just to show you how the install process from the software. I'll write one of the things that's really cool about the software center in Anduin OS is if you notice right it searches flat hub auto. It's very nice. I know that these regardless of what your opinion on the uh, flat pack debate, the fact of the matter is is that there's a lot of us that end up using software in the from the flat pack solely because that is what the developer is officially a OBS is a great example of this, where OBS officially supported by the OBS project through the and what you find in the distro is repackaged by the distro maintainer. So sometimes 
things in the dis now not to cast any shade on the distro maintainers but sometimes sometimes things work better in the flat pack because that's what's actually officially supported so you can see here you click a play very very easy kind of a very easy one click installation which i and then it starts working and now when this is done it's, it's going to a uh, let us open it from the screen as well which i'll show you in. so while we wait for that to we'll take a look at a few other places i do love the Again, pretty basic GNOME file Hey, uh, nothing wrong with that, though. GNOME's actually... As much as I hate GNOME 3, which I, I kind of always... The file explorer has never been the problem with GNOME. We have our standard listing of documents, music, pictures, etc. And see, we got... Oh, IO Riot is now ready to use. I can launch it right from the pop-up. And if I go back to the software... Actually, what do they... They just call it software in Anduin OS. I'm in the habit of calling Software Center because... He's meant for you. We can see here we've got an option to open it and even to uh, on the So now let's check out how we can. Up oh, there we go. See, in the same a uh, soft, we have a uh, the options for our updates. So I'm gonna go ahead and click down. a very very simple, very streamlined process. Which even though I know most of us are just gonna end up running our updates from the command. It's nice to have a uh, a good streamlined way to do it in the GUI. If you think, why do most of us do stuff through the command line? It's because it's less steps. It's less steps than going through all these a uh, menus and sub menus. So if you can make a GUI just as simple as a uh, command line, then I say so. It's installing the uh, system up, and yeah, you kind of got to click on it to see what the updates are. I prefer things more up in your face, but. Oh, let's see. Let's click on the Firefox one. See if that gives us any more deep. That's pretty cool, though. You can click through for update deets. Get like even little descriptions on them and stuff. When you... now, I would have to restart to apply these updates. All right, I'm not going to do that right now. And one more thing I want to show. You. This here is the uh, very bog standard. And it comes with some do not disturb. And we... and I'm going to show you guys the all apps menu because you see this is the pinned apps which comes with by default which is not, comes with a uh terminal console right there in the bottom too which is and we go with all apps here now unfortunately it just gives you all the apps by alphabetical order which is although i prefer the way that kde does it so let's see what do we it even comes with an option for startup application and a startup disk creator which is oh, a lot of the a lot of this is not terribly different from what you would see in you one thing I do want to mention is that Anduin OS is decent, which is very, very cool. That is Anduin. Hey, let me know if there's anything more you guys would like me to show in these. Don't forget to like and subscribe and press.